The sun is setting on the way back from the East Cut and we run into a motorist asking for help. Yes, we do. We got Their SUV is stuck in the sand and they don't have a tow strap. We felt this was a good opportunity to do a video on how to safely recover a vehicle. So this is, this is what I'm talking about. We have the Max Tracks up there. We have a shovel, but right now we're gonna do the very basic and that is a tow strap. But it's not a tow strap. Uh, this is actually a recovery strap. It is a little different. This is a little bit better in the sense that we can actually yank it. When you are doing a recovery, such as the one we're doing right now, <clears throat> you wanna use, by the way, this is the first time we're gonna use gearamerica.net. This is uh, the type of strap that you can actually do a yank, okay? Oh, we didn't put that for one. Can you see here? So this is what we're gonna do. We're going to go ahead and place this right here. And it's missing me right now, but there's a proper terminology for this thing. What is it called? The uh, shackle. The shackle right here, right? Oh, I think it'll pull right. Is that an eight cylinder? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, it'll. Yeah. It's a. Uh, you got a shackle right here. Now, it's very important. You got to check this out. If I had a ball hitch right here, that would be uh, no bueno, all right? Don't ever, don't ever tie this to a ball hitch. It'll come off and probably hurt someone. You never want to do that. So you got to make sure you have some sort of shackle right there. This is fine because this is actually um, attached to the vehicle itself, to the frame and to the shackle, and this is properly rated. There was a misunderstanding as to who owned the Dodge Nitro. It turns out the couple were good Samaritans driving by in the Dodge Durango. The driver of the Nitro was camera shy and did not tell us how she got stuck. That's about it, all right? It's important to bring a shovel along. Most of us own one at home and it can really come in handy. It does, does it have something for a shackle or no? No. Okay. We found out the Nitro didn't have a proper recovery point or even a simple transportation loop. So I decided to remove another shackle from one of my recovery points in the front of my vehicle. So that shackle is pretty tight. <clears throat> it's tight for a reason. But I'm going to go ahead and loosen it up. And we're going to attach this to the other vehicle. So we have the best possible connection over there. All right. A white Ford pickup truck arrived out of nowhere and stood on the sidelines as we worked on the Nitro. The driver never stepped out of the vehicle nor communicated with us. We'll revisit this in a bit. I took a look under the Nitro and came to the conclusion that the vehicle ran the risk of getting damaged no matter where we tied the snatch strap. So I decided to find a safer way. <laughs> so this is what's going on. You don't have a proper point yes, to actually lock it in but bam yeah. she does have this shit right here in the back so this is going to work out i handed the strap to the good samaritan and i told him i was going to reposition my vehicle in order to recover the nitro instead this is what happened for some unexplained reason, the Good Samaritan attached my gear to the white Ford pickup truck instead of waiting a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, the driver who didn't even get sand between his toes recklessly yanked out the nitro after we took all the precautions to safely recover the vehicle. What's funny is that his beer drinking passenger demanded we mention the driver's name and call him a hero in the video. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Motorist, for saving the day. All would have been lost without you, sir. You're a true American hero. Arrasa. Vaya, no te acabes. When we're coming out here, it was a lot more crowded, and we noticed that a lot of vehicles were driving in the soft sand. Many of them were just stopping right there, right? I mean, there's only one way to get in here, 
in, in some spots. And uh, here we go. I mean, uh, what the hell are we looking at here? So as, as I was mentioning, here's the deal. If you're gonna be driving down the loose sand and there's only one way to get out here, you know, please, please, please don't don't stop in, in, the, in that one section, okay? You're gonna force the incoming vehicle to make an abrupt stop that's gonna have you dig into the sand, probably gonna risk having someone get stuck unnecessarily. I understand if you have a mechanical problem, the vehicle is just out of commission and you're stuck there, there's nothing you can do. But if you're just gonna stop there just to take a selfie or, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason, that's not an emergency, don't do it, you know? Don't do it because you're gonna get someone else in, in, in trouble. The, the key here is momentum. We have to have momentum in the, in the soft sand. And if you're just gonna be parked there and, and, and obstructing that one lane, well, that's not cool, man. So don't, don't do that. Yep. I noticed that in a, a, couple, of, a couple of instances. Yeah. It was just a little annoying. You know? Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> it. So guys, I want to thank uh, Michelle and I want to thank my friend Carlos right here. El Primo, Carlos Lopez right here with Bass Brothers <clears throat> for joining us. We're trying to do a little more uh, work together and uh, trying to help each other. Uh, so please, it does help out if you hit that subscribe button, <laughs> if you hit that like button, and if you share the content. I mean, if you want some, want us to cover something in particular, trust me guys, we will do it for you and uh, we'll go explore um, and represent, you know, Bass Brothers and Coastal GX the best way possible. So thanks again, guys. You take care. See you guys in the next one. Peace.